Uh, once again, we continue to track the H1N1 virus, and there are new concerns about the deadly virus. Health officials in Korea, as well as the U.S., now reporting cases of double infections. Now, that's when a person contracts H1N1, makes a full recovery, and then somehow gets it again. How is this even possible? Dr. Marty McCary of Johns Hopkins University joins us to explain. Doctor, thanks for joining us today. This is really troubling because we have a couple of cases now, one in Korea and the other in West Virginia, uh, where people who have contracted H1N1 virus thought that they were okay once they received uh, the good bill of health that they were able to go out into the public, only to come up with it again. How is that possible? Well, it's interesting, Kelly. We're learning something new about this infection every day, it seems like. We learned last week about Tamiflu resistance, and uh, we've learned about a mutated strain in China, and then now we're learning about this case in Korea, and there's a pediatrician that claims the same thing in West Virginia, that they had H1N1 completely recovered and then got the infection again. And that must tell us that there's something about its interaction with the immune system. You know, H1N1 is causing a lot of hysteria, probably more hysteria than it deserves, because it can affect completely normal, healthy people. I mean, we've got cases of a normal, healthy triathlete suddenly dying of H1N1 and other rare sort of freak occurrences of this infection, things we've never seen with the regular flu. So I don't want to add to the already existing hysteria, but there is something very interesting about h one N1's interaction with the immune system. Well, how do we catch up with this in terms of research to understand exactly what's going on so that there's a more, uh, a pro, a, actually a better way of attacking it and making sure that it doesn't come back for a second uh, bout with someone who may have thought they were okay? Well, you know, this is sort of the black box of virology. You know, viruses uh, mutate constantly, and we are learning about new you know, strains and resistance and ways that they infect people constantly. Now, it doesn't appear that there's any threat from this new type of infection, but the concern, of course, is that this could represent some mutated variation of H1N1 and that another mutated variation could be, say, more severe or could be more contagious or penetrate more deeply. So, so far, the only mutations we've seen are mild H1N1 becoming another mild H1N1, but that's why we're sort of tracking this thing carefully. Uh, but as you know, we're also hearing that while, while it's being tracked carefully, it's also leading to other infections like bacterial uh, pneumonia. So uh, I guess the public would be somewhat alarmed in terms of how to address it. Uh, are there enough vaccinations out there? And now that we're hearing that people are getting vaccin vaccinated and still having this virus come back upon them, uh, how do we get into that black box open it so that there's something out there that can say to the public, we're on top of it, we've got control of it now? Well, I think the uh, reality is these viruses mutate faster than our labs can, can catch up with it. You know, we sort of identified this thing after it was out there and we were shocked by it. And the reality is that we've identified risk factors that should give us a warning to be super careful in these situations. If you have an immune system that's down, if you've got asthma or obstructive lung disease, or you've got one of these conditions that really has already taken a hit on your health, you need to be very careful. You know those four cases of H1N1 Tamiflu resistance at Duke University mm -hmm. last year? They all caught it in the hospital. They were in the hospital for other reasons, and they had other medical problems. So we need to be really careful. Well, a lot of times people can get other uh, complications in the hospital because of various staph infections, MRSA, and things of that nature. But, but Doctor, you bring up a very good point to how the, uh, the strain of H1N1 is uh, leaping ahead of the research that's out there, and you just can't do enough to, to get it all done in terms of catching up with it. But I trust that you will, particularly at Johns Hopkins University <laughs> and the Medical Center, I trust that you will be doing that and handling it for us. Thank you very much for sharing these insights with us. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Appreciate your confidence. Okay, thank you. Well, definitely, definitely. And for the very latest on tracking the H1N1 virus, you can log on to foxnews.com. You can go to the top of the home page next to uh, the What's Hot button, and there you can click on the H1N1 vaccine map, and, and that's where our arrow is pointing from there. You can also click on your state and see just how much of the H1N1 vaccine has arrived in your home area.